Uh, anybody in this room ever have or know anybody who's ever had anxiety? <laughs> Mary's going to help us. Mary's going to help us. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Mary T. Curtis, and the T stands for Therese, good Irish Catholic lady. I was originally born in Ireland, and I moved to America in 1994. And quite often, like last night, somebody will say, why did you move all the way from Ireland to America? To which I respond, I was very drunk at the time. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, I won a green card in a lottery the American government ran. Imagine that. Now, I tell you all that to say this. The year I moved to America was the year I realized what anxiety felt like for the first time. At least that's the first time I recognized it. The second time was when I went to my first improv class at the Second City. So I share all that because improv is very important to me. I do not perform, even though I graduated from Second City. It really helped me get through anxiety. And now I'm passionate about helping people and empowering people, teams, organizations to really work through anxiety. You were just asked, now I want to see an honest show of hands, how many people here experience anxiety? Let me see those hands. Yay. Because the truth is that every individual has the capacity to feel anxiety. From very mild to moderate to maybe an anxiety disorder. So there's a full spectrum of all of our emotions, including anxiety. That feeling of worry or nervousness or fear when we're not sure of an outcome, which was what I was experiencing when I moved to the States. Every single person has the potential to feel anxiety. And yet, I have never been asked by a CEO or SVP, uh, Mary, can you come in and help my team with their anxiety? They're struggling a little bit. Never. I've been asked recently by an IT company, uh, Mary, my team understand agile project management, but they don't implement it very well. Well, you think? Agile project management is more about people and interactions, right? And in interaction comes emotion. So the key thing that they're missing is our emotion drives our behavior. Every single individual. We are inside out people. Yeah, Pixar stole my title, just so you know. Inside out people. So I wanted to share with you this morning how I use applied improvisation. I integrate it into other tools that I have. Two populations, obviously, you know, organizations, institutions. And the second population that I work with a lot are people who struggle with addiction, eating disorders. And I'm very passionate about both. And they're actually very similar because guess what they all have in common? Yay. They all have thoughts, they all have emotion, just to different extremes. So when you think that we are inside out people, my role is to help people to manage you. How can you manage you from the inside out? How we communicate on the inside influences how we perform on the outside. Before I bring improv into it, I just want to share that an emotion has three components. Think back to when you've had an intense emotion. We have thoughts associated with the emotion. We have physical sensations associated with the emotion, and then we have the visual expression of the emotion. And remembering that emotion equals behavior, think of how when you're in organizations, for example, and they'll say, my team, I've got some controlling issues on my team. Well, what do you think might, dro might drive the control? Anxiety, fear, right? There's a need and an emotion behind our behavior. Lots of people miss that whole piece, so they want you to come in and they want you just to fix a surface problem. They're not looking at the individual as a system, which we are. We are all systems, emotional, physical, mental. That's how we operate. I have a lot of success working with people with substance use disorders and eating disorders, and I'm extremely passionate about this because my anxiety developed into an eating disorder, which again is driven by the emotion. The behavior is driven by the, excuse me, by the emotion. So managing you from the inside out and using applied improv. Very first principle, show up and participate fully. So when my clients want to show up and participate fully, and of course we deal with motivation, we're ready to go. 
My acronym that I use is ACT, Accept, Commit, Take Action. Can you say that with me? Accept, Commit, Take Action. One more time. Accept, Commit, Take Action. Of course, accept and commit is yes and. My goal is to help people to accept who they are, accept their emotion that they're experiencing at the time, rather than run away from it. Lots of people want to run, I don't have that emotion. I'm accepted. Accept who you are, everything about you. Start with what you have right now. That's another principle, correct? We talked about it yesterday. This is what I have right now, and this is what I'm going to deal with. So I'm feeling anxiety. What can I do to commit? And I have a lot of activities, but I'm going to ask you to experiment with me so I can show you a very simple way of explaining this to people. I'm going to ask you questions, and you're simply going to answer yes, whether you want to or not. Have you got it? Yes. Thank you. Would you like to tell a story with me? Yes. Is this story about a beautiful princess? Yes. Does she meet a strong and handsome prince? Yes. And does she fall in love and live happily ever after? Yes. Wonderful story. Thank you. Well done. Now, same story. This time when I ask the questions, you're simply going to answer no. Here we go. Would you like to tell a story with me? No. Thank you very much. <laughs> Where does the story go? Absolutely nowhere. One no, story stops. Just one no to ourself and our story stops. So if I'm trying to run away or say no or fight my anxiety, my fear, whatever the emotion is, I get stuck, which is when the behavior comes out. When I can accept who I am and be willing to move through it and take the risk, guess what? I realize I can experience anxiety and every other emotion and still do my job. People want you to come in and help people to think on their feet and manage change. Change is not the issue. The behavior is not the issue. It's the transition and helping people getting through the transition of change. That's the real issue. Again, inside out. Accept, commit, take action. Now, of course, there are a lot of activities I do around yes and and helping people to accept themselves. Then I say, OK, the best way to manage your anxiety is to be present and in the moment. And they're like, you're crazy. If I wanted to be present and in the moment, I wouldn't be drinking. I wouldn't have an eating disorder. Right? People want to escape their emotion. They would rather be anywhere else than what I'm asking them to do. So we do an activity, and we debrief it. And you just ask simply, what were your thoughts when I asked you to do this activity? And they'll come up with anything like, oh, this is going to be stupid, or whatever. And you soon realize that what takes them out of the moment are all their judgments, their beliefs, their story. We're all used to story, correct? So when we're in an emotion, we have a story going at the same time. Like I was sitting over there. And I'm Mary, you've got to focus. Just stay focused on the presentation that you're listening to. Because if I start thinking about mine, what do you think is going to happen to my anxiety? It's going to escalate. So it's truly improv is about, for me, managing me from the inside out. That's what I got. I managed to finish the conservatory program at Second City. I pushed right through it. And because it was helping me in conjunction with a coach to stay present and manage my anxiety. And I just wanted to say too, Paul mentioned yesterday about us being in alignment with other professions and other fields of work. The modern therapies, mostly the last two, are based on mindfulness and communication and commitment. The ACT acronym that I use is also the name of a therapy, and guess what it's called? Acceptance and Commitment Therapy. So improv is what I share with therapists, counselors, psychologists to help them help their clients. Accept and commit. This is such a fabulous tool. To help them get back into the moment, I say, OK, so here's more improv principles. We want them to observe their environment. When I'm feeling anxious, observe your environment. Be curious about it, abstain from judging it. Because then, when you accept what is, you can make a choice to let it go. See, as human beings, which we all are, no matter where we are, what our status is in society, we all have this going on. We can't control what comes into our mind, but we can start to make a choice about what we hold on to. And that's the piece a lot of people miss. They immediately feel anxiety, and they think they have to act out. Whereas if we learn to stop and pause, we'll say, oh, I can choose to let go. 
Now, does it take practice? Absolutely, this is not a quick fix. One thing I want to share with you, am I okay? Yes, emotional influences. There are three things that influence any individual's emotion at any time. Now, I'm not discounting mental health disorders, that's a separate issue. Even with that, medication can only help people, it's not going to cure their thought process. Three things will influence how anybody in this room feels at any moment, including this moment. On this side, we have language story. How I'm thinking, what I'm telling myself, the questions I'm asking myself, that's my story. What I'm telling myself will influence how I feel. So if I'm saying, oh my gosh, I'm dreading Oxford, and it's going to you know, really drive me crazy, and I, if I start telling myself that language, I'm not good enough, and believe me, I have those thoughts just like many other people, but if I stick with that thought, if I focus on that thought, what's going to happen to my anxiety? It's going to escalate, right? So when we can choose carefully what we hold on to in our head and we choose what we focus on, remember what we focus on grows. So if I'm focusing on I'm not good enough or I'm focusing on I'd rather be anywhere else but on this stage right now, if I'm focusing on that, that's not going to give me a positive feeling. If I'm focusing on, wow, I'm so excited, an opportunity to speak in front of AIN experts, wow. Even my body language changes when I hear myself speaking that. It's very simple to start practicing switching what you're focusing and switching what you're telling yourself. And all the improv activities really help people with that. Because it, when you say fully participate and practice with all the warm-up activities, this is what they get. The huge piece here is a language and story. How many people in this room are familiar with story? You're all improvisers, correct? This is a fabulous skill set you have to help people manage their story. So why don't we start helping people saying, okay, so what story is driving your behavior right now? What story is driving you using alcohol? What story is driving you controlling and being a difficult person on your team? When we can start helping people rewrite their story, embrace who they really want their story to be, and I use a lot of activities around story and embracing who they want to be, and the third piece is physiology. So anything about our physicality influences how we feel. So if I'm like this, what message do you think my brain is getting? I'm nervous, I'm anxious, right? The one way to stop that is just walk. I mean, things are so simple when we really understand what influences how we feel. What I do with my body, how I breathe, which is why breathing is important, which is why people are looking at mindfulness, because all you're doing is interrupting the thought patterns. Physiology, language, focus, all of these things will influence how people feel including you. And I want to do a very quick example with you. If you could just push your head back and look up at the ceiling. Go on, you can take a risk. I'm the only one who can see you. Now I want you to smile as widely as you can. Big, 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 big smile, big smile. And I want you to feel as sad as you can. Feel sad, now keep that smile on your face. Keep the smile on your face. Now feel really, really sad, really sad. Keep smiling, okay. How easy was it to do that activity? <laughs> it's a challenge for us to think about being sad while we are smiling. Did you experience that? Yeah. And I use that trick all the time because with clients who are in a lot of fear and a lot of resistance, oh, I'm never going to be able to change how I am from the inside out. No, that's not true. And as improvisers, we're here to say, yes, you can. Yes, you can choose to learn to manage your anxiety. It's never going to go away. If your goal is to get rid of your emotions, you're in the wrong planet <laughs> because all individuals have emotions and they serve as well. Anxiety serves me. It serves me to stop me from being in danger. It's how we manage the emotion makes or breaks us. I talked to an EAP, which is an employee assistance program, and they told me that la in the last two years, 78% there was an increase in 78% of the calls they got from employees regarding anxiety-related issues. 78% increase. And yet, a CEO will ask me to come in and help my team manage their behavior. 
Now, I do exactly what I do. I don't mention anxiety, but I know what I'm doing. And before you know it, if you ask the right questions, you'll have the CEO ask me for a follow-up coaching session with somebody. The improv works really well on the other extreme of people who do have anxiety disorders like addiction and substance abuse because we're bringing the environment to them. We're bringing the emotional space to them. That's never going to be their first choice. Their first choice is going to be, uh-oh, emotion, I'm gone. So how are they ever going to know no, that they can experience this anxiety? Anxiety is not going to kill you. Drugs, on the other hand, have you noticed the huge epidemic? So when we as improvisers can really share with people that you can learn to manage you from the inside out. Show up and participate fully. Be present in the moment. Yes and. And we're helping them identify everything that takes them out of the moment and how to help them stay in it. Observe your environment, your internal environment. Listen attentively to your internal environment. Let go of control, which is always the most difficult, because when you let go of control, your biggest fear is, what am I going to feel? And here's the biggest piece I'll leave you with. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Another improv principle. When you're thinking of an individual and you're going into work with your people, no matter where they are, I'm encouraging you to think of them as a system. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts, not just behavior, not just emotion, we're physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, social. That's who we are, we're a system. So thank you very much. I really appreciate your attention and have a wonderful rest of your conference. Bye.